Mickey Thompson presents the Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. From Los Angeles, California, right in the shadow of the San Gabriel Mountains, here it is at the Los Angeles Coliseum, one of the wildest motorsports events ever. Brought to you in part by the bottlers of Coca-Cola. And by the makers of Goodyear tires. If you don't have Goodyears, you need them. And America's premier motor oil, Valvoline. Hello, and welcome to the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. We're here for the Mickey Thompson Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. I'm Bruce Flanders, and along with me to call the action, Larry Huffman. Bruce, you think of the L.A. Memorial Coliseum, you think of the 1932 and 84 Olympics, and of course, the Coliseum is the home of the Los Angeles Raiders, and it's a wild place. Ah, uh, but there's no football going to be played here tonight. They've really made some modifications to this facility. A lot of modifications. Mickey Thompson's built a man-made dirt battlegrounds of high-speed straightaways and humongous jumps, and he's got the top off-road riders and drivers in the world here tonight. Hundreds of truckloads of dirt to transform the whole look of the place. And right now, let's all go for a lap around the course. Let's take that lap with Mazda driver Glenn Harris in his factory Grand National Mazda truck. The course is a half mile long, six turns and five major jumps. Down that front straightaway and bumping the rear of Rod Millen, the other team Mazda driver. Then into a left-hand hairpin, which funnels the trucks into a space wide enough for only two. A right-hand turn out of that hairpin and heading for the world-famous peristyle, a unique part of this Coliseum course. The drivers go up 70 feet to the peristyle, the top of the peristyle, and then the peristyle loop, which is unique in that the trucks go out of the spectator's view. Then back to the top of the peristyle and 70 feet free falling to the bottom of the peristyle, the floor of the Coliseum. At the bottom, a sharp right hand switch back turn through some rough whoop to do's and they set up for the fastest part of the course. The back straightaway. The trucks will be hitting close to 70 miles an hour with a couple of jumps thrown in just to make it interesting. At the end of that back straightaway, a very difficult and dangerous washboard section, and then a left-hand sprint car type sweeper. Then back up to around 65 miles an hour and over the finish line jump. And that's a lap of the Coliseum course. We're coming right back with Grand National Sport Truck Heat Race number one right after this. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Coliseum. Earlier this evening, Grand National Sport Truck Heat Race number one ran, and it was a dandy, to say the least. The lineup looked like this just before they took the green flag. On the pole, Danny Thompson in a Chevrolet. Next to him, Sherman Balch in a Nissan. Second row, Walker Evans in a Dodge. And number five, Glenn Harris, whom we took that lap with in the factory Mazda. Third row, number 15, teammate Mazda, Rod Millen. Number 20, a privateer entry, Tom Halliburton, another Mazda. And then back on the fourth row, all by himself in number 12, Spencer Lowe in a Nissan. Earlier today, Bruce had a chance to talk with Danny Thompson, the son of Mickey Thompson. With me now, the only Chevrolet truck driver in this whole field. And Danny Thompson, that's kind of a tough assignment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We're working against the Toyota factories and the Nissans and the Mazdas, and they've all been out here for a couple of years uh, doing all their research and development work, and they're, they're pretty far ahead of us. But I think this is our second race, and we're starting to work pretty good, and uh, I think if we keep everything going in the right direction tonight, we'll have a pretty good chance. Now, Danny Thompson had teething problems with his Chevy truck last month at the Rose Bowl in his last race. Power steering, and then he actually rolled the truck, which is a pretty serious teething problem, Bruce Flanders. Oh, it is. Anytime you get him upside down, watch for the green, and here it comes. Thompson apparently gets a heck of a start, and that Chevrolet making a lot of horsepower for him gets well out in front, but watch that battle behind him, Larry. A tremendous battle as Glenn Harris in the factory Mazda goes in front of Sherman Balsh into second spot, and then around the hairpin, there goes Balsh on the inside, and he just forces his way through. And Walker Evans back in the fourth place spot gets rearranged just a little bit, the sheet metal changing its shape on these trucks as we come through the peristyle end and out of the sight line of the spectators and ready for that free fall back into the Coliseum. Danny Thompson, factory Chevrolet, flying through the air with the greatest of ease. He's got a lot of experience. He's raced off-road, sprint cars, Formula Atlantic, Super V, and he's a tough young cookie from Costa Mesa, California. But Sherman Balsh right on his back tire. Well, that Nissan, the red, white, and blue, and the number 10 on board out of Fremont, he was a winner when they ran down in San Diego at Jack Murphy Stadium. But through this rough section, it looks as though Thompson's Chevrolet getting through there smoother than anybody else. Whoa, especially smoother than number 15. 
17, Rod Millen. I'll tell you, Thompson's got a lot of power, Bruce. He's, he's putting it to the ground, getting through the rough sections, and flying over those jumps beautifully. Sherman Walsh, the factory Nissan, trying to move up on him. And that number 10, and that number 5 is Glenn Harris in third spot. But it is uh, Danny's Thompson, Danny Thompson's race all the way now. Well, as we look back on it, remember that second place and third place have both been winners in main events in major stadiums already this season. And Thompson has yet to put together his first win, even in a heat race like this one. Danny Thompson out of Costa Mesa in the Chevy, the X-Side Battery Chevrolet out in front. Look at him go through the rough stuff. You're absolutely right. He has gone through that that those, that those washboard section a lot better than the Mazda and the Nissan. Oh, holy Toledo. Walker, Look at Walker Evans. Walker Evans having a handful with his Dodge, but he's still in a good transfer spot into the main event. We'll see if the Dodge can make its appearance later on this evening. And up on two wheels, a little bicycle move right there by Sherman Vault and some smoke now, which actually we're looking back at this so we can tell you that power steering fluid leaking off onto the headers on number five, Glenn Harris's Mazda. They're sideways down that front straightaway. This is heat number one action. Remember now, Danny Thompson, yellow Chevrolet in front, right behind him on a factory Nissan that's reputed, reputed to cost around $160,000 is Sherman Balch. Nose to tail as they head for the uh, Peristyle once again, and we're in the last lap action of this first heat race at the Coliseum. Up the climb one more time with three different optional windows or portals to go through as they exit the facility, but only one single narrow line to come back into it and point it fly back in onto the floor of the Coliseum. The drivers told me earlier, Bruce, they come off that Peristyle jump, they see nothing but blackness, darkness as they head down. They hope that there's nobody crossed up uh, beneath and stalled. On the back straightaway is still Danny Thompson, the final lap, and Sherman Boss just can't get that Nissan close to him. Both of them looking for that transfer to the main and also fighting right now for the better starting positions in the main event. And Sherman Balch will not give up. And the Chevrolet, well, the Chevrolet is putting down lots of horsepower. As Larry said, checkered black. Danny Thompson wins heat race number one. Sherman Balch ends up second. And the third place spot going to number 15, Rod Millen out of New Zealand. Danny Thompson dominating heat number one. Bruce, what do you think was the key? Larry, it had to be the way the truck covered the rough terrain. It really went over it smoothly, plus the amount of torque that engine was putting out. Putting out a lot of high-end speed, high speed. Danny Thompson in that V6 Chevrolet-powered truck. Looked awfully good in heat number one. Let's go on to the Goodyear victory stand and a very happy Danny Thompson and Sandy Reed. Sandy? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Danny Thompson. What a beautiful job. Into the winner's circle with Chevrolet, Danny. All right, thank you very much. The Chevrolet performed really well. This is only our second race, and the thing's really starting to work good, so we're happy for the X-Side and Chevrolet both. Thank you very much. Did you make any special changes in it at all? Uh, we've just been struggling with teething problems during the whole week. Being that it's a new truck and everything, and it looks like everything's finally starting to come together, and the crew and I are all very happy. Well, I don't think you're the only one that's happy. I think this crowd is happy over Chevrolet. How about it? Let's hear it for Danny Thompson. Thank you. The Grand National trucks are rapidly becoming the most popular class in short course off-road racing. Earlier, Bruce went to the Nissan pits and talked with Roger Mears. We're down in the pit lane right now taking a close-up look at Roger Mears' Nissan truck, the newest of a generation of off-road trucks. Roger, is there any basic differences right off the top that you can think of between this one and the old one? Well, yeah, first off, you know, this is the new hard body, and it's, uh, you know, of course, we, it's got all the good safety features like the chrome ollie uh, roll cage all the way through, and the chassis has all the structural uh, braces uh, to uh, support it to take all the abuse we put it through. When you are in here and driving, is it a comfortable driving position? Is it somewhere you could spend hours, or is it a very intense place to do your work? No, we concentrate, uh, you know, real, real well on the uh, driver comfort, because I am getting older, and <laughs> I like all the comfort I can, and I, I think it really enhances your driving to, to have all the things where you want them, the steering wheel. I mean, let's face it, those are the tools I have to work with, and. Uh, and the mechanic key is real particular about what kind of tool he uses to work on it, so uh, I want my tools where I want them. All right, your tools. We'll be looking forward to seeing <laughs> your tools work a little bit more, Roger Mears, who also loves to fly one of these Nissan trucks. Yeah. Probably going for a pilot's license soon, right? Uh, that could happen. Okay, yeah. thank you, Roger, for spending some time and Thanks, walking Rob. us through the truck. Thank you, Bruce. And the lineup for heat number two.